Alright, anyway. This is a chapter select. We're obviously going to start at chapter one. Um, so get ready to enter the medieval times. Uh, this story takes place in town of Nemeron? Nemeron. Nemerian. Nemerian? Nemerian. The town of Nemerian. It's a town far from the capital of the kingdom, therefore a little, a little far from its laws. Nemerian is known to be frequented by all the dross of the kingdom, as well as people of other races, orcs, dwarves, elves, and curse, like vampires and werewolves. Um, just a little FYI. There will be a lot of monster effing. In this game. Just a little FYI. So. Who are not allowed to live in the kingdom. It's not a dangerous place for its inhabitants. But they do see with... Sus but they do see with suspicion the sporadic dwellers. In it there is also the largest black market. You could try Lamar's Blue 2am. Although it's depressing. Of the kingdom... For this very reason, the kingdom's guards are not entirely welcome. One of the reasons why Nemerion is a little forgotten by justice. Here lives Bennett, an 18-year-old boy who lives with his father, Usher. Oh, I hope there's... I wonder if there's incest. The town blacksmith. He was abandoned by his mother when he was just a child. From his early childhood, he was instructed by his father in the art of blacksmithing, and as his only son, he took on the responsibility of inheriting the father's profession and business. As an inhabitant of Marion, he is used to dealing with all sorts of people, yet because of his father's strict upbringing, he is a straight and just boy. Straight? And a bit innocent. And of course, he is known throughout the village as the son of the blacksmith. He's always going from one side of one side to the other in the village, fulfilling his father's errands. Bennett only has one childhood friend, Conrad, with whom he grew up with and is like a, his brother. Both have many adventures and mischiefs. Conrad is two years older than him, and because of his family context, he has always been a little more involved in the town's black market issues. But that has never gotten in the way of his friendship. Another important person in his life is Wendy, not a girl, is a girl of good standing. Belongs to one of the wealthiest families in the village, and his father, Tarek, is the great-great-great-grandson of the village's founder, and therefore holds the office of village mayor. What do you mean, therefore? What is this? Is this a monarchy? Between them, there is a complicated relationship to describe, which he could define as friends with rights. What does that mean? I don't like what that- I don't like that! I don't like that at all! Why don't we have friends with rights with- with the other one, Conrad? The male one! With this preamble, we begin the story of the young Bennett. I think we have to awaken to our latent homosexual desires. We can't just... start with them. Ugh. Anyway. Um, god, that name is, like... The name box is hard to read. What font is that? Not to mention the font color. Either way, um... Bennett, come please. Uh, yes, Father, I'm coming. I'm almost done. Oh, okay, well, I, I guess... Uh, you're almost done. I, here I am, Father, I finished coming. What, what was it you needed? Can you deliver this order of nails to the village? It is for Valise, the owner of the tavern. Why are we trying to act so sexy in front of our father? Do you see this? Do you see how he's... <laughs> Why are we trying to act so sexy? I'm going to deliver it right now. How much does he have to pay? We can't just bring... Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, just... The face he's making is a little creepy. Nothing. I've arranged with him for a little beer tomorrow. Told me he's bringing it. Perfect, and then I'm going to go see Conrad. I haven't seen him for days. Does it does it have to do with the fading? Every time we change um, 
every time we look at something different, I, it's a little weird. Um, did something happen? Yeah, what kind of face are you making, sis? What is that? No, I don't think so, but I wanted to stop by his house to see how he was. Could you first go to Vorin, the charcoal maker, and bring a bag of charcoal? I need it today. Well, I go to the tavern from... And from there I go to see Vorin, and then I go to see Conrad, okay? No, I'd rather you bring me the coal bag. I don't know why Vorin didn't bring it yet. He promised to bring it yesterday afternoon. Well, I'll bring the coal and then I'll see Conrad then. Okay, well, awesome. Are your eyes even open? What's going on here? <laughs> oh, the poses are worse than Bound to College. Um, but are his eyes even open right now? And why did we need to get into this long, drawn-out conversation about the exact order in which I do things? Perfect. And tell Vorn that the next time he's late with the delivery, I'm not going to pay for it. No, he's happy. And please, don't delay. I need the charcoal to forge your father-in-law's dagger. Ha <laughs> ha. This order is very well paid. Gross, dude. Yo, God, Lord, look at his face. Sis, what you doing? What you doing? <laughs> uh, father, don't say that. You know nothing happens between me and Wendy. You said you were friends with rights. Good God. We've already talked about it many times. We're just friends. It's incredible how every time how every time you can bring up the subject. Like Is this like this it looks looks like he was trying to drop a deuce. I'm tired of you always insisting on the same subject. It's just that you make such a good couple together. And you don't have to get like this. No, them teeth, LMAO. But there's nothing going on between us. Please don't insist on it. Alright, alright. It was a simple comment. What a bad mood. You'd better go deliver the order. Oh my god! <laughs> Sir... <laughs> before <laughs> before I get in a bad mood too <laughs> uh, you don't think dental care was that advanced in these medieval times well let's just be glad it was uh, let's just be glad it was uh, yes I'm going better what, what? is that English? Is that even ye old medieval English? Yes, I'm going better. Doesn't even seem ye old evil medieval. Where are you going without the nails? You get like a goat and forget your responsibilities. You put me like this. Alright. How annoying he, he is with the windy subject. Sometimes he doesn't know when to shut up. Speaking of windy, after seeing Conrad, I'm going to visit her. She's sure in the town square. What the? Oh, is this my friend? Stop. Ah. Okay, we're just gonna be a pussy and scream? You scared me. Why do you do that? I thought you were a thief. Why is our place so far away from the rest of the town? Why do we have to walk through the entire woods to get to town? Why are we living on the outskirts like a, like a common monster? You scared me. Why did you do that? I thought you were a thief. Yeah, I don't like our friend. Calm down. It was just a joke. It's just that I saw you coming down the path very concentrated and wanted to give you a stare. A scare. <laughs> That's what you get for walking around unprepared. <laughs> yes, it's funny. And why are we not wearing a shirt? What were you thinking about? It seemed like you were arguing with yourself. Haha. <laughs> Scuffed bro Aiden? What? Nothing important. Does he have blood on his face? Did you argue with Usher about Windy again? How did you know? You're a witch. Haha. <laughs> 
No, but lately it's always a topic of discussion between the two of you. Yes, you're right. I don't know why he's been so insistent on the subject lately. What game is this? <laughs> and why is the font for the name so bad you have to squint? That's what I said. That's what I said. I don't know. I don't know. But this is medieval times. <laughs> We're getting medieval out here. And there's monsters that we can romance. Well, not romance, but, you know, consort with. Anyway, um, every time he can, he talks to me about Wendy and our relationship. He knows that Wendy's a very good catch. He only wants the best for you. Yes, but that's not an excuse to keep bringing up the subject. Yes, I understand you. But he doesn't do it out of evil, understand that. He just wants you to form a family with Wendy. Would Wendy even be allowed to, jo to marry a low-born like me? And well, you know that she's the best thing you're going to get in this town. Not to mention that you would have your life solved. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep, that's blood. Good old Conrad just got done burying a body, maybe. Yes, I know he does it without evil. But the problem is, I've told him a thousand times that I don't want to talk about it. And he keeps insisting on the same thing whenever he can. He asks me about my relationship with Wendy. That's also a little your fault, because you don't clarify your situation with Wendy. I mean, I literally said we're just friends. To Usher, at least. I don't have to clarify something that's personal, and it just has to matter to me and Wendy. He's your father. I think it's okay for him to know what relationship... what your relationship with Wendy is. Maybe if you told him something from time to time, he wouldn't bother you so much. It's either Conrad or Calm Dad. <laughs> and what do you want me to say? That we love each other madly? Well, I don't want you to say it with that face. And that we can't formalize a relationship because her family refuses to let her be with the blacksmith's son, which for them is degrading for their daughter? Well, that's what I said. So why is, is our dad oblivious to the differences in our social classes? Well, you're right about that. And the truth is that instead of lying to him with false hopes, I prefer not to tell him anything. Looking at it from that point of view, you're absolutely right. Wait. You you have to find a way to tell him the situation, without telling him the truth and creating a problem between families. Yes, but it's not easy. Stay calm, we'll think this out. Right now he's waiting for me to bring him charcoal so he can finish a dagger for Tarek. He does everything he can to please his father-in-law, and he doesn't even know how much Tarek despises him. Yes, that's true. If you tell him the way things are, it's going to create problems. But at least think of the good side of it. You have Wendy. You love her. She loves you. And you have relations with her all the time. I do not have relations with her all the time. I don't want to. Uh, I think she's the only female we can even consort with, so... Uh, all the rest are men, I think. I don't know why we have to start out some games as straight. I don't like that. You're much better than the other. Haha. <laughs> it's more than I can ask. Don't you think so? It's not how you imagine it. Uh, it's been a few days since anything happened with Wendy. If you knew how much I want her now... Oh, gross. Besides, why are you complaining? The other day I saw you with... Taylor, the coal miner's son? Yes, we only accept homosexuals in this world. What is this eye? What is this picture of an eye? What is this picture of a mascara eye? Okay, awesome. I guess that's the... We have an inventory? Okay. Taylor, the coal miner's son. Taylor, the coal miner's son, and you weren't having a bad time. What do you mean? Where was he doing this? Come on, let's go over there. Nobody's gonna see us. Wait, are you sure? If my father sees me, he's going to kill me. Literally, it's the medieval ages. Eh? Uh, it's true? You didn't tell me you'd seen me. 
How much did you see? I saw everything. <laughs> and yes, you had a good time. So you like snooping? Haha, <laughs> you were literally having sex in the woods. No, but I was very intrigued about it. Oh my. You like, don't you? Yes, very. We can choose who he has relations with? Well, apparently, we can choose whether he's a heterosexual or, or a homosexual. Don't stop, please. Is this the Medieval Times, lady? I thought this was the Medieval Times. I didn't get the memo. We were texting our BFF Jill. Like, what? Excuse me? Well, it's nothing you haven't already seen. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, it's true. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't know what I'm surprised about. Well, back to the subject. You always tell me that when you're with Windy, you have a great time. Yes, in the that part, we understand each other very well. I love how perverted she is. Ew. No, no, we don't need to remember. Hello? We don't... What happened? Did I click remember? I tried not... I don't... I think I have to click remember. Yeah, I don't... I don't... There's no way other way around this. I think. Or maybe I did... Maybe I didn't remember. I hope someday... Maybe it just times out. I hope someday I'll have someone like this by my side. You're going... you're going to find someone, so be patient. Well, I'm going to run my father's errands so he can finish the job for his co-father-in-law. Haha. <laughs> Where do you have to go? I have to take this order of nails to the innkeeper, then go and get a bag of coal that they should have given us yesterday and take it to my father. And then I thought I'd stop by your house. Oh, come on. I'll go with you if you want. Your thing's all right? I was worried. I hadn't seen you in a couple of days. Yes, I was busy with my father's business. I had to go deliver some goods to the town of Balder. Balder? Balder's Gate? You know, those special orders from my father. Yes, I know. Have you delivered everything? That, that choice is only there as a courtesy. You have one choice. I think I didn't remember, though. I think it times out if you don't click it. I think. Because, I mean, I didn't remember anything. We didn't see any lady bits yet. We didn't remember having a, f a consorting with the woman. Yes. I mean, yes, I finished the order. Well then, we could go to the tavern at night, okay? Why so mischievous with your looks? Why so mischievous? Yes, of course. You know I never refuse a beer, and why do you look so surprised and shocked? Speaking of another subject, did you hear about the guard who appeared impaled at the entrance to the village? What? No, I didn't know anything. I heard my parents talking about it this morning, but I didn't pay attention to them. What, you hear someone's just been murdered, and you're just like, ah, oh, no big deal. Yes, my father told me. According to the rumors, it was a patrol of the kingdom who arrived yesterday morning in the village and were following an assassin. They went through the tavern asking for him and they went to Tarek's house. Wendy's mother made the four guards pass to the main room where Tarek received them and said that there was a heated discussion and suddenly a silence. And a few minutes later they saw three guards leave the house and then they left town. It's all very suspicious, but gives the impression that Tarek let the rest of the patrol go, and impaled the other guard to leave a message. R really? Okay, I guess I guess you deduced that. Yes, I thought the same thing. Anyway, I don't know why the kingdom continues to send guards here, if they know they are not welcome. And I suppose that, as usual, no one from the village saw anything. We've gone back to early straight-level faces. <laughs> Oh, those early faces in straight were a trip, weren't they? Oh my god, I, oh, I, I'm remembering now. They were, they were a treat for the eyes. You suppose, well, haha, <laughs> 
You know that no one gets involved in these matters, especially if Tarek is involved. Exactly. What I find strange is that they came here for a murder from another town. Even more so, knowing that they will not get any information here. Obviously, the victim must have had some weight in the court of the kingdom. But the madness of sending a patrol here in search of the assassin is not explained. It's all very rare. Yes, it's true, but here the rare thing is common currency. Haha, <laughs> what? Okay, come on. So I deliver and end up with my dad's errands. You better go ahead. I'm going to the black market. I thought you wanted to hang out with me. Whatever. If I wanted to keep me company, fine. <laughs> Is this a ye old f, f de police? Oh, I wish. It doesn't seem like it. Um, yeah. Are you sure? Did something happen? No, nothing. I just remembered that I had to find out something for my father at the markets. Um, okay. Okay, are you sure everything's okay? Yeah, stay calm. I'll see you at night in the tavern, okay? Well, see you at night. Benno was worried about Conrad's rapid change of plans only a few minutes ago. I had told him that I would go with him on his errands, and suddenly he changed plans. On the way to the tavern, Bennett notices the city is especially busy. Could have fooled me. He is convinced that it's probably because of the guard impaled on the door. Uh, hello. Good morning, Miss Deli. Is your husband in? Hi, Bennett. No, he went out to deliver an order. What do you need? Well, my father sent me for, with an order for nails. Your boobs are really far apart, right? Maybe, maybe i just never seen boobs before. I think it's just because she's old. Ah, oh, yes, it is true. Valise told me you were coming in today with the nail order. Sorry, I forgot. No problem, here are the nails. She looks like a old, out-of-work porn star. Like, she used to be... Like, 30 years ago, she used to... She used to, you know... <laughs> get pumped up with the best of them, you know, but now she's just a withered out husk. Well, no, she's still, you know, she's still got it, but she's just not doing any porn videos anymore, you know? I don't know. Belize told me he's bringing the beer barrel in the afternoon today. Perfect, good. Do you need anything else from the forge? Not at the moment. Thank you very much for bringing the nails. No, oh, please, it's a pleasure. See you soon, and greetings to your husband. This lady's boobs are weird? Okay, so it's not just me. She's just old. That's just how it, that's just how it be when you're old. Wait until you guys are old, you know? Um, once you guys are old, you, you, you'll, 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 your boobs are gonna be looking in different directions. Thank you, and give regards to your father. Oh god, hi Nariko. Wait, before you go, do you know anything about the guard at the village gates? Only what my father told me, that he appeared this morning impaled at the village gate. Yes, they told me the same thing, but nobody talks about... nobody talks about more. Anyway, have a good day. Greetings. Greetings? Is that how you say goodbye in the medieval? Greetings, Miss Deli. I guess that's how you say goodbye in the medieval. Greetings. What in the hell, says Maka Hadama. Welcome. Having finished his assignment, Bennett now goes to the coal cellar on his father's assignment. I don't like how he's called Bennett, since my favorite one of, well, not my favorite boy in Genshin, but my, one of my favorite boys in Genshin is Bennett. And it's just, it's giving me some weird association. <laughs> okay, what's going on here, kids? Just as he passes through an alley, he looks into it instinctively and sees Amok in the distance at the back of the alley. I'm a little bit afraid. Maybe we should just go ahead and do that? He's an Orko known by all people. He is the right hand of Tarek. Everybody knows he makes his dirty work. He is quite friendly and polite, but he's also very temperamental. 
but as he grew up on the streets of the village, everyone loves him and appreciates him. We love Bennett, I love Bennett. I love seeing Bennett spread open. Bennett seems to be to see something suspicious. In the dark of the alley, he sees Amok, another silhouette, and as well and as he well knows. In Nemerion, Nim it's not good to meddle in other people's affairs. Everything was very suspicious, so he continued walking and took his eyes off the alley. He thought to himself, you'll give it that this game's layout looks good? The layout? You, are you talking about this, the text box and whatnot? Really? You think it looks good? Okay. I mean, we're all free to our opinions. When Amok is working, it's better to look away. He does not, he is not working. I'm just, I have to put this up here because I know what they're doing and I'm afraid it'll zoom in on them. But the moment he was about to pass the alley, he heard a groan. He finished crossing the alley and his curiosity was stronger than his common sense. That groan, it seemed more of pleasure than pain. Knowing that he could get in trouble, he decided to stick his head out and take a look. Alright, we're about to see something, I think. What could be the worst thing he could see? Surely nothing he hadn't seen before. A beggar? A whore. Okay, I'm getting a choice here. I get to choose what I see. Are they just- is it just a beggar talking to him? Or a- uh, or a hewer? A hewer. You know? Well, I think it's a hewer. So... Benno was ecstatic with what he saw. <laughs> we really are a peeping Tom! First with Conrad, now with the orc. Amok was effing a courtesan in the alley in broad daylight in plain sight. <gasps> no, is this a woman? I didn't... No! I'm skipping! Oh no! Oh no, it's a beggar! It's a beggar! It's a beggar! Bennett was ecstatic with what he saw. A what? What? Oh! Here I thought. Here I thought. Here I thought we had the choice between whether they were. He was. He was having relations in the alleyway, but no, my choice wasn't, my choice wasn't whether or not he was having relations, it was who he was having relations with. Oh my god. He's not, now, he's just abusing a beggar on the streets. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, oh my, I'm, ah. Uh, goodness. Oh. oh my lord. Bennett was ecstatic when he saw Amok was effing a poor beggar in the alleyway. Alright, well. But Bennett realized that he was still excited. After all, he was 18 years old. Yep, just yoga, downward facing sex toy. He still had an erection. He really liked what he saw, so he had to decide whether to jerk off or go straight to the Coleman. We shall ye old give the ye old w ye wank, a ye old wank. So he decided to go under the village bridge next to the river, where they really, where there really are people, so he could touch himself. There, dude, it's just under a bridge. Anyone could see us. He looked around to make sure no one was around and began to play with himself. He'd really warmed up to watching Amok F that poor beggar in the alley. Let's just wipe the cum on my hands together. Alright, mmm. Nice and sticky. Just wait for some sex scenes that have animation and sounds. You'll piss yourself laughing how bad they are? What? Oh, I'm afraid now. I'm afraid now. 
When he, when he finished cleaning up and making sure no one had seen him, he made his way to the coal stand. Ugh, I have a hair on my tongue. Ugh. Ew. Um, hello, Mr. Vorin. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Vorin. Good morning. Wait, no. How do, how do I do with this kind of voice? Can I even do with this voice? Vorin. Uh... Good morning, Bennett. I'm sure you're coming for your father's order. Too happy. Yes, sir. God, he's old. Oh, God, if he is if he has anything to do, if we can possibly get with him, I'm going to be so mad. A thousand apologies for the delay. The mine the mine order was delayed and also my son did not come to work yesterday. And I am late with orders, I apologize. You can't wait for your reaction at the end of chapter one? I don't like that. I don't like that you're too you're too excited for this. <laughs> that means it must be really bad. Well, the problem is that my father needs to charcoal urgently to be able to deliver an order. You could give me the bag and I'll take it right now. Ew, god, he does not look good. No way, Bennett. I'm carrying it myself now. I close the shop. And personally deliver it to your father right now. I want to apologize in person for the delay. His son waggles eyebrows. Wasn't... His son was the red-haired red -haired guy, right? I saw him right next to him a second ago. That's the guy that Conrad slept with. No need, Mr. Vorin. No need to close shop. I can bring the bag to my father. No, please. It was my mistake. I'm going to the blacksmith's right now. Good, as you prefer. Yes, it's the right thing to do. Greetings. Greetings, Mr. Vorin. Give the message to Vorin. Why wouldn't we give the message to Vorin? I mean, our dad told us to, right? So, why not? Um, oh my god! Honey, where are your irises? How are you? What? What? Oh, oh, what? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Vorin, I forgot. My father told me to tell you, the next time you delay with the delivery, he won't pay you the order. Do it, don't do it? Well, which one? You're telling me two different things. What did you say, boy? That's what my father told me. You and your father are disrespectful. I already told you why I delayed with the delivery. It wasn't my fault. Right now I'm going to go talk with to Usher. And I don't want to see you again in my store. It's not for you to answer me that way either, Mr. Vorin. Why are you suddenly shadowed? I guess a cloud just moved over the sun. He's possessed by a demon. Uh, I'm, a, I'm offering an apology. And close my store and go right now to deliver the order. What? Like, what are you doing? What's going on with the sun? And you tell me that you're disrespectful. I'm going to fix things right now with your father. At that is... What is that? Is that his purse? <laughs> what is that that he's carrying? At that moment, Vorin left with the coal... Oh, it's a coal bag. I'm sorry. I thought that was ye old medieval man purse. <laughs> left with a coal bag on the way to the blacksmith shop. Bennett was worried about Vorin's attitude, and even more so about his father's temperament, but he knew it was something his father could handle. Well, I finished all my father's errands. I'm going to go have a beer at the tavern. It's still early to see Windy in the square. <gasps> Bennett is on his way to the tavern, and to his surprise... Hello, little Bennett. Good day. How are you? Uh, hello, Amok. Very well. And you? No, oh, can you not get this close to us? 
Bennett at that moment was paralyzed. The first thing that came to his mind is that Amok had recognized him. Well, here... Well, well, here touring the village. What were you doing? Bennett breathed again when he realized that Amok had not recognized him in the alley. Nothing, just finished some errands for my father and I was going to the tavern to hang out. Why is some twisted dark god we've angered? Nothing like a beer after work. Do you want to come with me? Mm, it's a very good idea. Of course, why not? Well then, let's... then I'll go with you. Oh, is this porn lady again? Hi, Bennett, you're back. Amok, good day. Good morning, Mrs. Deli. Yes, I finished all the orders and I ran into Amok and we decided to have a beer. Alright, have a seat. I'll serve you. Uh, Amok, can I ask uh, you a question in confidence? Yes, of course. Tell me. What do you know about the guard impaled at the village gate? Are we really trying to learn something that we probably shouldn't learn? Hmm. Something they came to town looking for a Bolidor killer. And as they didn't get answers here, they went straight to Tarek's house. Yes, I knew that, but they told me that there were four guards and they left three. Yes, the guard you are missing is the one who was impaled. Ha <laughs> ha. I find it very strange they were sent here, knowing they are not welcome at all. Yes, that is very rare now that you say it. Where were we? Uh, so come on, you have to know something else. Please tell me, what happened? Why do you care so much? Are we running a detective agency? Come on, Bennett, you know how things work in the village. Yes, but... Some things are better not to know. Don't insist. The only thing I can tell you is that, as you know, no one who disrespects Mr. Tarek goes unharmed. Shrek looked way better than this thing? Oh god, you, you want to get with Shrek? Is that what you're saying? Uh, A-okay. I think I understand what you mean. Better that way. There are things you better not know. It's for your own safety. Yes, you are right. <laughs> We'd better change the subject. Okay, have you heard from Conrad? Uh, if I saw him this morning before coming to town. What do you mean, if? We were chatting for a while, and then he told me that he had something to do, and he left quickly. Do you know where he went? No, he didn't really tell me, but he seemed to have forgotten something, and suddenly he left. Well, I'll see if I can find him. Did something happen? Not at all. I just have to give him a message from Tarek. Are you sure? Yes, boy, stay calm. Nothing happens, it's just business. Bennett and Amok continued chatting away for a couple hours. A few hours later, and with a couple of drinks on top, they say goodbye. Amok was as fresh as lettuce. Because of his structure, he has good resistance to alcohol. He was going to visit Conrad, but not so much Bennett. He's a little drunk, but he can still walk. He's just a little dizzy. Amok walks out to Varric's house in search of Conrad, and Bennett goes to the street to go to... Where are we supposed to meet Conrad in the bar? Oy, I'm a little dizzy. I don't know what to do. Shall I see Wendy or go home? Honey, we're going home. We don't see women. I'm very drunk. I better go home. What? Oh, okay. For, wait, is our place on fire? Yes, it is. Arriving at his house, Bennett sees his house in the smithy on fire. As Bennett gets closer to the home, a feeling of anguish invades him. He can't imagine what happened, and he starts screaming. Father? Father. But he doesn't hear any... Weren't we supposed to also bring the coal home before we went for drinks? Did we do that? But he doesn't appear... Oh, wait, that's right. The other guy brought the coal. I remember now. But he doesn't hear anything. He can only hear the noise of the fire consuming his house. 
The feeling of anguish and helplessness is overwhelming. Is this because I told that dude that, um, that our dad doesn't want to do business with him anymore? Did he burn our house down? A thousand things go through his head. He can't think clearly. He tries to enter the house, but as the heat of the fire approaches, it's unbearable. Closer, he shouts again. Father, are you there? Please answer me. Silence is terrifying. Bennett gets more and more desperate. The thought of losing his father terrifies him. The heat of the fire a few feet away is unbearable, forcing him to retreat. Sobbing, shouting for the last time. Father. Father. Again, he can only hear the noise of the fire, which is getting louder and louder. And he decides to enter through the window, which still the fire has not reached, without hesitation, is approaching. The heat is almost unbearable, but at this point, nothing matters to him. Without thinking, he breaks the glass with his elbow. A few seconds after breaking the glass, here. Bennett! At that very moment, Bennett felt an indescribable sense of relief, and without thinking about it, he walks into the house. And he saw his father lying in the living room trying to get up, and he runs towards him, and the smoke makes it difficult for him to breathe. Hang on, father, I'll get you out of here. With all his strength, he lifts up his father and carries him in his arms, and begins to walk towards the window. Yes, father, hold on to me like this, it's so romantic. Come on, hold on, we're almost out. He's having more and more trouble breathing, suddenly Bennett feels a loud, noisy sound. A beam falling from the ceiling collapses inches from them. Bennett realized they couldn't stay one more second inside the house. He arrives at the window, rests on the window frame, and with all his strength, throws his father's almost unconscious throws his father almost unconscious out of the window. We yeeted him. The fall blow makes Usher react and takes a deep breath of fresh air. Bennett goes out the window, already very dizzy from the smoke, and his father helps him up. The boy walks away from the house, safe from fire and smoke. Both sit on the floor and look at each other. That was close. At that moment, Bennett felt his life return to him, seeing his father by his side with just a few scratches and burns. Stop, Kuro, you have no idea the future you're headed to? What do you mean? So you know what happens if I pick this choice? So are you telling me I should scroll back and choose the other option to not tell not tell that Vorin guy? Is so but okay, tell me. Is the choice I'm headed to you know, like is it going to force me into heterosexuality? As long as it doesn't do that, I'm fine. You know, as long as there's plenty of gayness on this path, I'm okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know. At this moment, Bennett felt his life return to him, seeing his father by his side, which is a few scratches and burns. You tried to warn me? This game peer, this game period? <laughs> Just stop playing the game is your advice? That's your advice. Just stop playing the game. It's over, son. We're both fine. Bennett couldn't contain the emotion anymore and started crying dissonantly. Aye, father, I thought the worst was over. Lots of gay, stay away from Wendy. Aye, father, I already read that. Quiet, son, it's over. They both stood for a moment in silence. A second later. And as if it were a miracle, all of a sudden it began to rain. It's not raining over here, sis. <laughs> what? Is that a, a rain cloud localized entirely over our house? And God, listen to the rain looping. It starts and stops. Ah. They both looked at each other amazed. You just don't know if I can handle it? Oh dear, you have a loose tooth and you don't know if it's a baby's or an adult's? Sis, how old are you? Don't answer that, because if you're not at least 18, that's not allowed. But I know you're at least 18. Anyway, um, what do you mean? 
What do you mean you don't know if it... Goodness. It's a miracle. And after a few moments, Bennett stares at his father. Sorry, father. I didn't think this could really happen. Uh, forgive me. Why does dad have a rat tail? I don't know. Because it's medieval. Usher stares at his son and realizes he's really distressed by something that he did. <laughs> yeah. That's normal, just like the northern lights, exactly. Usher stares at his son and realizes... I already read that. What are you talking about, son? Forgive me. Forgive me. Was that your forgiveness face? Are you sure you're not dropping another deuce? I didn't read that. But don't worry, I'll fix it. It won't stay that way. Usher understood less and less what Bennett was talking about, and he began to think that his son was shocked by the situation. I assure you, father, I will kill him with my own hands. Bennett, calm down, for God's sakes. Take a deep breath and concentrate. What are you talking about? Vorin, who else? He's a effing... I swear I'll kill him. How could he do this? Wait, slow down. I don't understand. What are you talking about? What happened with Vorin? At that moment, Bennett paused and looked at his father and realized that he had no idea what he was talking about. Wasn't it Vorin who set the house on fire? What are you talking about, son? Are you crazy? Why do you think Vorin set the house on fire? It's just... I don't understand a word you're saying. Explain it to me, what Vorin has to do with the house on fire. When I went to see him in the village, I told him that if he was late again with the coal order, you wouldn't pay him for the charge. And he went crazy. He said that he was coming straight here to talk to you. He seemed really out of it. At that moment, I didn't think anything could happen. I was upset, but I didn't imagine he was going to do something crazy. And when I came home and saw her in flames, the first thing I thought was that he did it. Are you crazy? How can you think that Vorn would do something like that? We've known each other all our lives. He's our f he's my friend. Vorn is incapable of doing something like that. He's a grouchy old man, but he could never do something like that. So, Vorin doesn't... Have you seen Vorin? Of course it was him. Sometimes you look insane. Huh. <laughs> Sometimes, Dad. <laughs> I always look like that. Yes, uh, yes, he came to bring the coal. Sorry, I imagined anything. I let myself go. It's just that everything made me think he was the culprit. Yes, Vorn is a crazy old man, but he could never get to that point. He would never hurt us. A lot has happened between us. But did Vorin finally come here to bring the coal? He just said he did. Yes, of course he came. He brought the coal and left. But... Yes, I know. When he spoke to you, he was very angry. Yes, he spoke very badly to me, and when he grabbed my bag and... He grabbed the bag and walked to our house. It looked like he was coming to kill you. He was very angry. Yes, he told me to apologize when you went to see him. He just had an argument with a client. And he retaliated against you, and he apologized for that. Really, that old man is crazy. I told you, he's missing a screw. Ha <laughs> ha. But what happened then? Uh, the truth, I don't really know well. I actually fell asleep smoking my pipe. I think it could be just that. What do you say? After Vorn left, after a while, Bailey's came with a beer. I almost finished the dagger of Tarek. So I decided to go home for a beer and rest a bit. Then I lit my pipe and I think I fell asleep. Say something. Nothing, father. Don't get in trouble. Nothing happens. Besides, this can happen to anyone. Yes, but I was stupid anyway. Forget about it. It's over. The important thing is that we're together and well. Let's go into the house. I want to see how everything is. Okay, let's go. They both walked in the house and saw that... Is it, it's not safe to go back in the house just because it's not on fire. What? Also, what's going on with our house? Why is the back of our house all green? What? Is our house always... That doesn't... I don't understand. 
I don't understand what's going on here. They both walked in the house, saw the damage, they th and thought the rain had come at the right time. Like, it's not safe in there. They knew that they had work ahead of them to be able to repair the house completely, but at least they are both well, and that is enough. Like, did the back wall of our house collapse? The next day... Alright, well... Our place is looking good after the fire. Look at this. Was 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 this was she on fire? I don't think so. <laughs> she she was she never she was never burning. Anyway, <laughs> this is where I'm going to end the stream for today. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you again.